Hey, what's up? Hey, not much. How are you? Hanging in there. Hanging in there. That's all we can do. That's, all we can do. <laughs> That's right. I guess no Excuse Nanette me. yet. Right. Okay. Excuse me one second, though, please. How are you? Doing all right. Good. Good. Just, uh, notice how low the water was actually at uh, Indian Cabin Creek the other day. I guess they ripped out the beaver dam, so the the, the creek's the lowest I've ever seen it actually since we've been. Oh, there. I didn't know they were uh, they were the, they were going to do that. Yeah, I think I trapped the beavers too. So I guess they finally get the DEP finally got in there, trapped the beavers, removed them, and then pulled the whole dam out. So it's it's crazy. It's like we only have like maybe like two inches of water. That go behind right now it's like really low which is fine mm -hmm. you know, i think it's yeah, really well wow. i kind of like the beavers they're pretty cool there weren't too many spots i could think of where you can walk right up to a beaver dam you could basically just walk right up to it uh, wow. right on the whole causeway so do, do you know how many were there i saw at least three there were definitely there was definitely it looked like a maybe a male and a female and then the juvenile one was definitely really small my wife mistook it for an otter. She thought it was a, a river otter at first, but okay. after looking a lot closer, we're like, no, I think that's just a baby beaver. I don't believe so. Oh, uh, look, we got a couple people watching us. Very specific. <laughs> hi, guys. Oh, oh hi. Upper. But that's Galloway County. Can you see right. us? And that, they wouldn't no, be yeah. in the system. We can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Hello. Turn it yeah, off. see, that's where they lived over here. What did they call that? I forget. But they wouldn't be in the census if they lived over there. Like that's what I'm saying. They weren't in the census because the black people that lived here all lived on the other side of the oh, railroad track. So you're saying there were many more black people? Oh, yes, but they okay. lived there. What it, what it, the Manor Track. The Manor Track, it was called. Yes. Right, I'm doing double duty here. I'm going to record this on, on here. Just in case. And they, the thing was, Mr. Bozarth, they had businesses here and they required people to come here. That's why the black people still live there. Okay. Because the generations went down, the names all started areas like that. Absolutely. So I, you should have said that. Or... I, I know I meant to say it, and then I don't know. I got distracted or something. I don't know. Uh, because that's where they live. All right, let me try to join one here. Old peach tree is ready to pop blooms. Yeah, they, they. I got um, notice from the residents. They got cherry trees, that their cherry Some trees are starting to. Already blooming. Is starting to bloom. Oh, and the maple trees are all blooming. Yeah, we have bushes blooming already. Too. Our daffodils are coming up too. That's pretty early for them. Oh yeah, mine are blooming too. It makes me happy. Well, this is the time when a late frost can do a lot of damage. It won't yeah. kill the daffodils. It won't oh, not the daffodils. No, 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 no. But that's that's why we don't have a. A, um, a peach tree industry anymore in I South know. Jersey. I know. Uh, I have to say this. Um, sorry, it's taken me so long, but the this, house this is a new um, lap. Uh, what do you call this? iPad. Yeah. And yeah. it's yeah. not connecting to That's the. I, I cook and bake a lot. Our mm -hmm. hot water and our gas bill last, and I don't be cold. My heat set on 76. 76. $139 was our gas bill last night. Much to my chagrin. Mine well, was zero. So oh, I don't have gas. <laughs> <laughs> but $139. How can you beat that for everything we get out of it? The best thing we ever did is to put gas in. You have gas where you live, Mike? No, we don't. We right. keep our we keep it pretty cold though. I'd say like we never really set it above like sixty seven or sixty eight. Honey, <laughs> I could never I could never live with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't be cold. We burn our wood stove too, but right, it's been off now for a couple of weeks. But uh, I can't stand to be cold. Yeah, we're, we have a boiler, but we're look we're we're probably okay. going to be swapping to a heat pump this year. So that's where we're in yeah. the process of now is starting to get. You know, there's going to, there's funds available to switch to a heat pump, so we're going to try to utilize that. And, yeah, uh, cool. That's good. The boiler. We'll we'll keep the boiler as resiliency in case there's you know uh, something goes something goes wrong with the pump. But yes, pumps what we want. I would do that too. That's good. We looked into solar, but they wanted to cut down so many trees, so we decided against it because they really were going to take down almost most of the trees around the house. 
Yeah, I always say that. That's why I can't have solar either. I will not lose my trees. Yeah, well, I mean, we barely even run the AC in the summer as it is. Um, so we, we really, we don't want to lose the trees. It makes a big difference having those trees in the summer. Absolutely. So we may, we may look to put septic out. We have this one area by the drain field where we may eventually put something on the ground, but I don't know. It seems like it's a much more complicated process to do a ground system. So we, I just punted it for now. We may look at the line. Heat pumps, a big one for 2023 though. That's our goal. Cool. Good luck with that. that that's good. All right. Sorry about that. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, we're in the mayor's office here instead of in the council room because it's being painted. And it's much nicer. It's quite, it is. It's this cozy. is nice. Yeah, it is. It's, cozy. <laughs> it's, it's cozy. So I just wanted to give updates on some of our grants. Um, we're ongoing with the community energy planning grant, and that's the one that's being done by uh, the engineer. Uh, we've got a template for the actual report that needs to be done. So. We forwarded that to Ryan and we got through all of the different sections for different types of energy that we want to look at, including solar, community solar, uh, EVs, um, what else? Oh, and energy efficiency. And so that's what we as a team are doing right now is promoting the energy efficiency programs for uh, South Jersey Gas and Atlantic City Electric. And uh, the brochures are out on the counter there, right? I picked one up. So if you have any, I mean, take a couple with you if you have anybody to give we'll them to, them we'll, you know. And I got a call from, well, it was actually a Facebook post from somebody on the island in Vetner. Hmm. And they said that um, Atlantic City Electric is calling people to invite them to participate in the program. Awesome. So I'm I gonna, like that. I'm going, to, I'm going to see if they can do that. If I can contribute to this discussion, the Board of Public Utilities has just issued a statewide bulletin announcing all the opportunities for community solar in New Jersey. And I was interested to discover that Egg Harbor City is not one of the places where it is available. Well, it's not available because we don't have it. But well, if we got it, we, we, we'd be listening. There's a new process that is not really community solar, but it's big corporations that have uh, huge solar fields somewhere in the state that are offering a 21% discount automatic on all your electricity bill if you sign up with them. Well, we, and will, we don't, and that's not available here. No, but it's available, I think, at Millville. And, it is, yeah. And we we are we can go to Millville. We can we can participate in the Millville one. That's mm. not something I don't know. Yeah. We did that like last year sometime that the city council passed a resolution to be, for us to be able to join it, but it's not built. So there's nothing to get right now. So when it, when it comes online, we'll promote it again to the community. But yeah, we would get a discount on our, our electric just by registering. You don't have right. to do anything. Right. You don't uh, have, it's just you, register with and this. there's no commitment permanent right. long term. And I think each solar, each solar project has like a limited capacity on how, how many people could participate. But, but that's nothing like what I would like to see Rick Dovey and the ACUA do specifically for Egg Harbor City if it ever becomes possible. And I was hoped that would be we talked part of the study. It is, it is part of the study. So it's just uh, finding a location for it. And uh, we have plenty of places we could put it. Uh, yeah. Well, there have, the issue they're having with um, installing so a solar project in a harbor is that it has to be located in, in one of the city's high use areas and the only place that's high use is city hall so it would either have to be here on the roof and i was told well the roof is old yes this roof is not good at that was discussed and so ago. now they're talking about putting it on the field next to peace pilgrim park a ground array but there it's not very big it's and not and, and it's not and it's like it's going to ruin the park we use that field. Yes. No, no. That would be not good. What about, I mean, the, the whole Acme site or across yes. the street? Well, that's, that's so much right. area. The, the, the that's whole private property. So <laughs> you could purchase it or whatever. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, right, so, there's so, going on so, the Acme property, too. Something's, my, there's, something's going on at the Acme property. Seems like they're doing some yeah. work. But yeah, I don't think it's, you know, whatever it is, they're just pretending like they always do. 
Believe me, I was in all that stuff there. Well, we, could talk, an we could talk about that offline. <laughs> I have some information on that. All right, so that's, the, that's with the Community Energy Planning Grant. The other uh, Atlantic City Stewardship Grant, the $5,000 for the Nature Trail. Mike, you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Definitely made some progress. We've uh, we purchased the kiosk. I think that's now at City Hall, actually, boxed up. Uh, we've also purchased the gates. I think they're, I don't know if they've been picked up yet from um, what's that store? Tractor, tractor supply, uh, but that's where they're at. Um, the artist working on the main sign for the Mount Laurel Loop has just completed her work. So she sent over her drawings today. I could probably share if you want me to. Uh, what the finalized version of that looks like. Uh, she did a great job, and uh, that sign's now pretty pretty much ready to print. So I'll probably I'll probably go to. There's one more artist that's working on one of the other signs. I'll probably wait for him to finish up his work. That's uh, going to be a sign showing how the mountain laurel flowers, like the stamens, uh, catapult the pollen, which is kind of unique in the, in the right, flower right. world. So he he's drawing something up there. Um, I. The map is coming along pretty well too. Uh, I don't have anything really too big to show there. Uh, there was a volunteer that uh, we had set up a computer up in Vincent Town for ArcGIS, and he was gonna make the trail map there, but he's kind of flaked on us. He hasn't really been replying to emails. So uh, what I did instead was reach out to Boyd, who runs Boyd's Maps, and he downloaded me like a high res copy of a topography map um, that he has been using for most of his maps as well. And I'm, I'm just using that. So I'm just going to draw the trail right on overlay on top of it, put a little legend in there, uh, put some other information about like where to walk to go to Cedar Creek High School and uh, which way you're facing, things like that. And uh, that, that, that should probably be done in the next couple of weeks. Um, I talked with uh, Lisa about um, when to do the open and date. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of thinking the weekend before Memorial Day, which would be Saturday, May 20th. Uh, she didn't want the open and day to be on the same day as the, the lake opens. So I'm thinking probably the weekend before. I definitely open to suggestions there. Um, the cleanup, you know, we're going to have the Cedar Creek Environmental Club help out with the cleanup. That will be on, I guess, May 6th, the first Saturday during the citywide cleanup. Uh, the Cedar Creek kids, the sports kids, I think, are going to clean up the main area of the lake. And the Environmental Club, they're going to help focus on our area. And they've also kind of agreed... Um, Lisa, the, I forget her last name, the person who runs the environmental club over there. Uh, she, she seems interested in helping out with like kind of like a forest stewardship plan long term where the kids would take a more active role in just keeping the area clean and keeping eyes on it, helping plant um, anything, any trees we get or any shrubs, um, things like that. And uh, pretty much any sort of reforestation we get into helping along with that as well. So. I was quite quite happy to see the engagement from Cedar Creek High School for both the art department and the environmental club. Uh, seems like that it's kind of like they're knocking it out of the park when, when they want to step up and help. So that's pretty much where I'm at. I don't think I have any other updates. I think we should just discuss on trying to come up with a trail opening date um, and what sort of- that, that date's fine with me. It's a Friday. She wants, to, <laughs> she wants to do it on a Saturday. Yeah, so I guess the 21st, whatever that's Saturday before Memorial Day would be. I think that'd be a good one. So I, I don't, I don't know if like anyone from the press should come out or or how how we should make like a press release or something along those lines. Uh, so I get the only other things I'll still need to coordinate, which I haven't done yet, is uh, with Public Works to install the gates and install the kiosk. You know, I'm not really. Sh I guess Keith's crew will do that. Um, I did reach out to the scouts. Well, just a scout, that would have been uh, Jack Sen, Scott Sen's kid, because uh, he was working on the creek back there. And I asked if he wanted to help with the kiosk too, but I think they're just gonna keep focusing on the creek. So I may reach out to the, I guess, the Jersey Shore Council for the scouts, see if any of them wanna help as well, but maybe yeah, those they, paths are just best for the public works crew. Yeah, um, it'd be good to get the, the scouts when we do the re revegetation. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah. I, we, we're, I, the guy from PPA said, wait until March to reach back out. So pretty much on March 1st, I am going to reach back out and say, what's the update on the trees? Uh, okay. It would be nice if they get us some trees and some mountain laurel that we can plant. Um, yeah. If not, though, we'll, we'll, st we'll still make do, you know, so. Well, we if we put it in the budget. I think there's a thousand dollars in the budget for, for trees and, and plants. 
Okay. Yeah, I guess so, we could. Should we just hold on to and see if we get them for free, you know, or? Yeah. Um, Are you uh, keeping track of the budget? I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we, ha we really ha we haven't spent too much of it at all yet. So the signs will be the next big chunk that we spend. Just um, be specific about where you want the kiosk. Okay. Maybe you want it next time you're down, you could go out there and stick something in the ground. Like definitely. A, well, when they do install it, I, I'd hope to be there. You know, I definitely yeah, okay. like to, to be there for both the gates and the um, and, and uh, the kiosk install. I did also go out to the mill last Saturday. I met with Paul. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, how'd you like that? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. That place is really, really cool. So yeah. he thinks we're going to, I saw the wood that he wants to use for the benches. Um, that looks like it's pretty good quality oak. So he wants to make the things big and heavy. So as he turned against theft. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, they, I, I'm still waiting for, I guess, the secretary there to give me a call at, with, with the quote. I told him we have 500 bucks budgeted. We want to obviously use as much as we can. So mm -hmm. he also said they'll be able to make the fence posts and they'll be able to, he's going to just buy us um, treated wood for the gate posts. He's like, well, I won't mill that. He's like, this is get regular treated wood. Um, but he said the fence posts and the fence rails, he's like, he'll, he'll mill that himself. And he thinks, you know, we'll, we'll, that won't be too expensive there. So, sure. um, yeah, I think we're moving along pretty well. You know, it's, I guess in the next couple of months, it's going to really be crunch time for it to get everything finalized. But for the most part, I think we're in pretty good shape. You know, um, we're just going to need to do a big cleanup. And then ha also public works will be a big factor. Uh, also with the cleanup as well, because there's some things I'm not going to be able to get out of there. Like there's a mattress that was dumped recently, for example. I'm not going to be able to get that out myself. We'll need, we'll need key screw to do that. So um, as it warms up a little bit more, uh, I'll, I'll start reaching out to Keith and try to get some deliverables and timetables on when they can do these things. I don't think the ground ever froze this year, really. It's, no. It has cold, and although we might get some cold days, I don't think it's going to be cold enough like to anymore. freeze. So he could probably go out at any time when when he has the time, you know what I mean? So he doesn't get stuck. Because I know, like, getting closer to the opening of the lake, they spend, like, a week there cleaning yeah. up yeah. stuff and all. So. And it seems they've been great in some of the roads. Like, the campground road is is has been graded. So it's the, that road that goes to the lake. So they've definitely been out there doing, doing some stuff. Um, I guess the only other outlier is I don't know if we still need to look into an ordinance for closing Liebig Street with a gate, you know, so because there, there is a stop sign already on the on that street. So I, I guess it is considered like a legal road. So I guess like we would, you know, with with the gate being installed, we probably should have like authorized vehicles only sign. I, I just don't know if there needs to be an ordinance along with. I'll these. check. I'm on the ordinance committee, but <coughs> I'll check. I, I, I Probably not, you know, because it's our road and I think we could do what we want with it, but. Okay, cool. And Look, me, but I'll, I'll, I'll run it by, we have an ordinance committee next week, uh, meeting next week, and I'll bring it up. All right, cool. And the only um, other thing I, I spoke to Mayor Elise about was crosswalks at uh, Itstein, I think the road's called, the one by Cedar Creek. You know, there's a connection to the trail there. It kind of goes behind that one house. So she she's going to reach out to the county for two crosswalks, one at that Itstein road and the other at Nagali. Uh, over by the fishing pier, um, try to get two crosswalks so people can kind of go back and forth. Right now, everyone trying to go to the pier uh, is just, you know, playing frog or trying to cross that road sometimes. So may maybe we'll be able to get a little like flashing light or something. Who knows? Yeah, I well, think that's, that's, like support. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that will have to be done through the county because mm -hmm. they have the, uh, it's going to be part of that um, bike, bike lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I, I, so they'll so have to so admit the plan. I think they should go on, you know, and she's like, she just said she's going to send it to her county person. That might not happen for a while, though. Yeah, I figured as much. It could take a bit. Uh, still, that would still be nice to, to get that, get the gears moving on that one. And, and for our family, too. It's definitely treacherous trying to cross that road. Right. Uh, people, right. people go really fast on it. Fly down that road. Right. Yeah, it's nuts. It's really not. People, I've seen people definitely going 100 miles an hour over that bridge and like almost their car just goes airborne, I feel like, because it's, you know, it's, it's a bu it's a bumpy by that old bridge. Uh, definitely a hazard for sure. Right. Uh, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to update. Do you have any questions or anything? No, but I thank you for everything you're doing. It's awesome. And I love that you're getting the kids involved because kids need to be taught these things. I mean, we've got a couple of generations of kids that not, haven't been involved and haven't been taught these things. And we need to bring that back. And thank you, Mike, for that. 
Yeah, I, it's, you know, the woods are so close to Cedar Creek. Eventually, maybe get the elementary school out there, too. I haven't really reached out to them yet. Um, I think for, for the elementary school, probably more like tours and things like that. But yeah, but get having those, those Cedar Creek kids, you know, the, you, know you just you know, they don't have a nice woods connection right from the school, pretty much. I think that's, yes. you know, that's, that's going to have some value. So they'll learn to appreciate what's around them. And I Hopefully. love that. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I, you know, I, I hate technology. Oh, here it is. No, that's not it. Embrace it. You can I try to it. listen your your out your output for the camera. Maybe it's like trying to look at the wrong camera. You now this is my iPad. I put something on here and I can't find it, and I can't help you. <laughs> and I I'm not real proficient at using the iPad. That's community. What I found interesting is uh, Amber, who drew the flowers. Uh, yes. Mount Laurels. She said she did it on her tablet. I was like, that was pretty this impressive. Yeah. Okay. I, have, I, well, everything was supposed to be set up for the room there, and it, it didn't get set up. So anyway, and then the other thing is we did apply for a small grant uh, to Sustainable Jersey. Um, a two thousand dollar grant for us to just have money to operate for some of our actions. Uh, the budget includes um, money thirteen hundred dollars to start a newsletter, a community newsletter. Um, we want to make sure people have all the correct information about things that are going on. I love it because there's a lot of. Um, stuff going on on Facebook and it's yes. so uninformed. Yes. So if we and it's it is a Jersey, a sustainable Jersey action item for um you know communicating with with your town. I think that's very important. So but there's thirteen hundred dollars budgeted for that. Um we got a lot of in-kind stuff from the Humane Society for um we're gonna be doing a, a chipping clinic for pets. Mm. Um, and so the Humane Society is going to be doing that, Steve Dash, and then Remington and Vernick, um, they're, they're going to help us with these uh, Brownfields actions, um, printing for, uh, let's see, one of the other council people came up with a, like a welcome, welcome mat card with all the important phone numbers and contact information if a new resident comes into town. So I want to get something like that printed up. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> refreshments, if we could only budget $100 for refreshments, if we have meetings and stuff, and we can only budget $100 for giveaways. Um, but let me see, so what else do we put in here? Might you be aware of a feral cat problem in a cover city? Where? New I live. Yeah. Feed them. Pardon? Put them no, they have feed them. They do. That's why they're there. Well, all over the place. Don't feed them. Have you been to my house, sir? <laughs> well, these Sadly. are feral cats. Right? Well, these used to be feral cats too, every really? single one. Absolutely. They knock on the door. Lady, let me in. Oh, I'll have to tell them about your house. Yeah. No, don't you think? <laughs> all right. So here's what our project description is. Uh, Some of them are beautiful. And they'll love when you come, you know that. Community, Brownfields Inventory, Reuse Marketing, Lead Education Outreach, Energy Assistance Outreach, which we're doing, Health health and Wellness, Water Conservation, Arbor Day Tree Planning, um, Recruiting New Members, Providing Information in an Electronic Community Newsletter, uh, Fund the Welcome Packet, Handouts, and Refreshments and Giveaways for Local Green Team Events. Um, so we'll know in, I think April they'll announce if we get it. So okay. hopefully we'll get it. Well, I, well, you have been very good about getting grants. I well, with that, this is the one we never get with, okay. that we need. That's what Sorry, we that's need. Put it out to the universe. And Come I got a, I got a uh, email today from Sustainable Jersey. We are being featured in their newsletter, which goes to the whole state about our tree projects Excellent. so and, uh, and they're really thinking. impressed with it because you know they they asked me to speak at one event and i couldn't make the event so we didn't get on there but 
the, at the hub events that we do with Cape May County. And so. I, I like it that our people are receptive to it also. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, which brings me to, I'm gonna uh, skip down to discussions, uh, trees on private property. Um, we have another little small grant opportunity and I would like to apply for this. Uh, it's the uh, Shade Tree Federation William J. Porter Community Tree Project Award, and it's a $2,500 grant to do something like planting trees. And I, I would, I think that we had a lot of interest from people when we did the street tree project. So a lot of people wanted to, you know, know if they could get one for their yard. Mm -hmm. And of course we couldn't. So this grant, if we get it, we'll, we'll try to make it for a tree giveaway. Awesome. And there are, um, I don't know if I, the Arbor Day has a nice program where you could set it up to have the trees shipped to, you know, and they come in a box this tall. They're smaller trees. They're about one they're inch caliber. They're seedlings and they're not Well, they're like one inch caliber. Yeah. Survivable. They're little whoops. They could either mail them and send them to homes in boxes, or you could have them delivered to one location. And the they county come, has giveaways they come every year. That's the tree. So does the gas company. Is it the gas company? I, don't know. I think it's the gas yeah. company. Gives them away. Around Arbor Day. Steve got one, right? Yes, I did. I got one, too. Gas company? Tree. I got a ball of cypress. It's doing well. I'm going to ask what it was. I also denoted, I guess, I think it's called the Arbor Foundation, and yeah. they're, they're sending out like 10 trees to us, you know? Yeah, for... they'll be this big. They'll be just, a, they, they won't have any roots on them or anything. It'll just yeah, be a so I'll, I'll, I'll still looking forward to planting them. You have to plant 10 to get one or two to survive. Okay. I've done it every couple, every couple of years I do it. And I have a gorgeous cherry tree, Cornelian cherry, that's ready to be planted in the ground. It's beautiful. Awesome. And I have red buds. That, that I got the last time. And I'm hoping this year they get a little bit bigger because I have a spot in my yard. I, we used them. to have old red buds down the front from when we moved in our house and they died years ago. I'd love to have some red buds back. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So I'm, I'm, I would like to, with your permission, be able to apply for that, you know. Absolutely. Okay. And okay, we'll go back up to Brownfields. <laughs> we should be jumping around a little bit. Okay. All right, I had a PowerPoint presentation, but what I'll do is I'll just, which, it's on there. I think it's on there. Like no, on that computer. Oh. Maybe I can switch it. Hold oh, one minute. I got to figure out how to do this. Uh, all right, how do you turn? I think we lost her. Uh-oh. -uh. Just give her a minute. I'm sure she'll probably bring it right back up. And you know, I also saw the uh, at the Acme site. I saw a few trucks out there yesterday, or the day before. No, Friday, I think it was. Yeah, I saw trucks out there. There was work going on. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, did someone buy it? This is it, or is you know? No, that, well, I don't. I don't know what happened. They were supposed to open up some kind of a uh, internet uh, auto sales site. Hmm. That was the last so, I heard, and that was that was like two years ago. Oh, but there had been work going on periodically. I mean, they put windows in, they put a new roof on. So, oh, there we go. You yeah, you're back. Uh, you're uh, I, so I got to figure out is. how to share my screen. How do you do that? You there still? Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. Yes. And see you. Here's the PowerPoint. Stop video participants reactions more. Do you do the science fair? I don't understand how to do the science fair. Yes, I have been every year. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Gary's going to do it this year too because mm -hmm. Roseanne's been short of uh, Right. Judges. And, and so I'm, judges. I'm getting more and more for her. Right. 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 Yeah. What category? Engineering? I put on there that he was an engineer. Okay. I, I, when I told him, I just well, I put that you, you're just working here it is. Engineer, because that would be good. But I do. And it's more about the presentation, how they tell you how they did it. I love it. Here it is. 
Oh now, boy, I got I it. Never look at the senior level biochemistry. No. But they're all basically PhD projects um, done by high school students working at Rutgers with Rutgers professors. No, I do little and kids. It, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's just not high school. Yeah. Oh gosh. All right. You uh, guys could see this, can't you? Yes. You can see it. Okay. High schools in New Jersey that both are up in Tom's River area really? that send these kids here. Oh, yeah, I know a yeah. lot of them come yeah. from up there. All right, here's I, I did this PowerPoint. Okay. Um, oh, Brownfield's inventory. How oh, nice. Yes, this is one of the actions that we're gonna work on this year that we agreed to work on. Uh, the first, there's like three or four parts to this, these brownfield actions. They, they generate a lot of points for our certification, which we desperately need. So the first, the first one is a, doing a brownfields inventory and prioritization action. So first of all, any uh, brownfields, any commercial or industrial site mm -hmm. that uh, is, currently vacant or not being used that uh, has contamination. Um, and it can be public or private. It could be like, it, this is what we have. Former gas stations, closed factories, dry cleaners, vacant warehouses, and landfills. What's the big pollution that comes from a dry cleaner? Uh, well, the... Um, the dry cleaner on Philadelphia, I guess they put solvents or something that yeah, yeah. got yeah, into yeah. the they building. Oh, and, yeah. the, ground. And the state is controlling it, but it's still a brownfield. Yes, it's a brownfield. So the inventory will give us 10 points. And if we prioritize what we come up with after the inventory is done, you know, to, to is, say is which is to recognize what are brownfields in our town. Well, they're out. It's out there. Yeah, they're, that's they're already listed say. on public sites. And it's and just that it's never been compiled into one document. OK, that, I understand. What so that's saying. what we okay. we're trying to do. Because basically we can't do anything about them either. Well, they, I'll, I'll talk a little more. OK, about that. Um, we get five additional points if we do a prioritization and say which ones are the most important to, to address. The action is good for four years following when it's approved. So our certification is due next year. So if we get it approved for next year, it'll be uh, it'll still be in effect the next time we apply for certification, okay. which is a good thing. And it, qual it qualifies for what they call gold star, which I don't I think we'll ever get that, but you know it just it's a qualifier for that. Uh, so why why is it important to do an inventory? It's a good land use tool so that the you know people the people you know controlling our land can know where to go, what to, mm -hmm. what to look at, uh, re, putting them back on the um, market like the tax rolls getting them occupied again could improve the economy. It will um, increase property values, especially for the properties in the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, the inventory itself can be an uh, element of the master plan, which is currently being done. Um, it's a resource for planning and zoning requests, permits for the zoning office and so forth. It'll help um, determine where infrastructure improvements should be done or not done. And it'll be a resource for applying for grants uh, when we actually go to apply for grants to take care of any of these properties, having the inventory uh, will will help us qualify better. And it also gives the community the right to know about mm -hmm. contamination in their neighborhood or whatever, uh, which I don't think is a big deal right now because everything's in the ground. And mm -hmm. we have city water and, and a sewer. lot of them have been worked on. I mean, and the state monitors a lot of them too. Right. Um, yeah, but you know, a lot of that uh, years ago, I think when uh, Jay and Kevin introduced some land development that they wanted to do and also who was the gentleman that came in and wanted to develop wanted to develop the army site what was his name persia no it was a, a developer he, oh, the beezer prop when it was beezer beezer okay beezer that's the west and what reared its ugly head on the um, um the acne site is the gas station that used to be there. right so they had to uh, they had to stay away from that area. You just can't. You, you just can't put a housing development over one of those. 
uh, one of those sites. There's a whole lot of testing that has to go on for that. See, that's so, what we want to find out so exactly what, you know, have, each property, each. Well, yeah. think of all the wells that are and all over the city. And unfortunately, that's the same thing with Weisbacher's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not going to do anything for a long time until they figure out what that plume is doing and where it's going. But the state monitors that. And the longer monitor. they wait, the farther the plume will get sure. into the middle of the it town. It is all heading yeah. towards this creek right it's down here and towards gradient. the river. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that, I was told that. So what, what plume is this? Where is this from? From, from the, the uh, Weisbacher's cleaner. We had all the clothing factories. They up the pits mm -hmm. in the ground where they pour, they had chemicals to put on the clothing to dissolve the basting stitches and when they were done, they took those chemicals and poured them in so, holes right yeah. in the ground. Mm -hmm. That's Easy. all in the back. Right and where the, uh, on the corner where the Wawa is now, there was a big yeah. clothing factory. All the way over on the railroad track, there were clothing factories every, um, everywhere. And, wow. And, and is, is it in the groundwater? Like, has it gotten to the groundwater yet? Well, we, it's, I'm sure we have sure. city water. Sure. So, you know, it's, it's not something that we're ingesting or anything. It's just there. You know, so if it, if that if those areas have to be disturbed for any reason, you'd, you'd have to you know have a study and know what's what's going on there and have our the water to is clean monitored. It up. City water is monitored and everything. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's why I said it's a problem, City but it's not a problem. Well. It's only a problem yes. if yes. we d decide we want to develop them. But as it stands right now, there's a lot of money coming down from the state um, for small municipalities like ours to tackle some of these things because the state wants to see more tax revenue generated in the municipalities. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a little bit. Um, so anyway, the people who should be involved in creating the plan would be us, the green team, um, the city council, land use board, mm -hmm. municipal staff, engineer, tax assessor. I already got all the information from the tax collector uh, the actual property owners and any consultants that we're going to deal with. Um, let me see here. here you go. And so it should take three to six months to do the um, um, the plan, not the plan, the, um, the, the report, the study. And I already started it and it's like half done. <laughs> So there, it's just I need help, like from people. Like I'm, I could look at look up stuff and find it, but I don't know what, what it is I'm looking at. So you need an engineer or somebody to help you decipher. Gary what it does is. that for a living. No, <laughs> so, no, it's not that. Not, but you not do. Wrong. You you would know more than most people. And it shouldn't cost anything for us to do it if we do it ourselves. <laughs> and if uh, we, you know, you get a. Um, a consultant to do it, like an engineer or something, it could cost between a thousand and fifteen thousand dollars at least, depending on how many sites you have and how complicated they are. You can go on the state GIS site. Yeah, that's a resource. And you can download the, the Brownsville, and they will spot everything that they have. You can zoom in on Egg Harbor City, and they will I have spot the ground. You know, Browns. I'll show it to you when we're done here. Well. Um, <laughs> So, know. so as of now, we have about 11 identified sites that have, wow, um, but they're all small sites. They're not, you know, major, major things. The, the pollution the, is far away from those sites now. It's it underground, right. down gradient. Um, the spreadsheet will be a living document that can be added on to as we go along, find out new sites or more information about a site. Um, the documentation is coming from data miner and other sites. Uh, I'll mention them in a little bit. Um, photos, we downloaded some from Google Maps. Uh, there's a couple I have to drive by and take a photo. And uh, we have ownership information already. So on the 11 sites. Um, then the idea would be to prioritize the sites and decide, you know, if it's if it's private property, if the owner's willing to do something about it, if not, you know, that might be a lower priority. If they're not uh, public lands, that things that we own that we can control ourselves, um, it'll reduce blight if we can get them cleaned up. Um, we can determine public health ri risks, uh, prepare them for marketing. And that's that's the big thing. There's That's, an, that's a, another action like two actions down is to create a marketing plan for Brownsfield sites. 
So that would be the ideal thing is to find a developer willing to come in and clean it up because they want that site, that yep. site, like that would the be, Polycarpo that site. Would be big in this town. Though. The Polycarpo like site, the Acme site, if that was a redeveloped zone site, if they want the whole block, they might be willing to work on cleaning that up to get the rest of the block. We know what a cleanup consists of because we've had two of them in my years here. One in the entire Lincoln Park was dug up for yes. two years. Oh, right. Yes. Right. Oh my gosh. That's yes. right. And I had another one on Liverpool Avenue up the street from me, which was dug up over a period of many months, not yeah. years. But those are expensive and massive projects. And it only covers the territory that That's and, and 10 years later, more stuff yeah. will move in from adjacent properties. Um, it's dynamic. Uh, having the um, plan will help us seek funding sources, and then we could, like I said, rank the importance of the sites. Um, we could, we have a map already. I guess it could be more detailed, and it, we need to determine the conditions surrounding the property. Say, like that that gas station on the pike. It's next to a redevelopment zone. But, but it's I, not in the redevelopment. It seems zone. to me I remember that they had said that that gas station site was like contained, that that was not affecting the Acme site. I remember that whole thing. Maybe they made that up, but I remember that. Well, see, this is the thing. It's like nobody knows. So let's get it all down in a document. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's, yeah, let's that get that it in a document. The Acme site. But, but every well, I believe, has only one depth to it. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so to get points for this action, we need to um, submit these things These things here, a summary of our process and the sources of the data, um, verify the data miner reports. I don't know what that means. I don't know how you would <laughs> verify it, I guess, to just make sure that the accuracy, that of the accuracy of the information that the state has. Um, we need to uh, develop a policy. It could be done, I guess, by resolution, I don't think you need an ordinance for this, but just to um, determine who who's going to keep this document up, updated and how often it's going to be updated. Um, our rationale for prioritizing these sites, and we'd have to put a narrative in that. Um, who's going to get the report? Well, we're going to give it to city council, accepted by resolution, like they do everything else, which accept the resolution. Yes, we accept that report and then we stick it in the drawer. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, like and um, upload the spreadsheet map in PDF form or some other. I guess PDF would be the safest form to some website, either the city website or our, our website or That's whatever. Cool. Thank you. So people know. Uh, these are some of the resources we're going to work with: the uh, um, EPA, the DEP data miner site, and the New Jersey Office of Planning Advocacy, and the NJIT New Jersey Brownfields Assistance Center. And that's, I've already been in touch with them. In fact, I will call the woman tomorrow after our discussion tonight. Um, they have a whole department that was set up. They got federal funding to help municipalities like ours with these Brownfields actions. And uh, they do everything from, you know, develop, helping you develop your, your um, report to prioritizing them, That's to awesome. seeking funding, to working with um, private owners. There's, fun there's funding available for private owners wow. as well That's as awesome. municipal mun municipalities. So I wanna work with these, this uh, group. Um, I've been trying to set up a meeting uh, and I wanted to, I asked to make it a joint meeting between the city council, the green team, the land use board, the public, the engineer, so, so forth. Um, I've asked, I, I proposed the date to, for our next meet, uh, meeting date, which is March 28th. Mm -hmm. And they told me they need two hours to do a presentation, oh my which, God. which would include questions and answers. Yeah. But they would go through their whole program and how they can help us. And I, uh, I understand some of the council members are not available and that would be the Finance and Redevelopment Committee. The three other members of that committee besides me are not available. So I asked them for uh, alternate dates. I haven't received any alternate dates. I've asked three or four times already. 
In fact, I asked at the last council meeting and didn't get a uh, commitment. So um, I'm asking our team here, do you want to do it ourselves and do like a, um, a recorded meeting so that other people can view it mm -hmm. or participate by Zoom? But do you, do you want to have it on our next meeting date or not? Yeah, and we've got to get people interested. We've got to like talk it up. Come on. You, this is your town. This You've got to be interested. Well, you know, this information is kind of like, I mean, who cares, right? Yeah, public, well, that's the problem. Who cares? But in the end, yeah, it's should. it's a process. Care. Yeah. You got to work work through it. But I think that the government should be involved. Uh, it, they should be interested Absolutely. in making the town better. So, I mean, and our city council should care too. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. It. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, it is, it is. You know, and, and the city's always you know, place. because they, and I understand they don't want the responsibility or the headache or the financial or the work or the financial stuff that involved with it. Yeah. But there's grant funds available and we have assistance from. The New Jersey Brownfields Assistance Center to guide you through it. And in the, uh, talking to the woman, she said, "Oh, if you agree to move forward, we hold your hand. We will I, I take you through awesome. everything." I no idea all that help was out there. So I, I, I'll set that up then for the for our regular next Leave meeting. Twenty eighth, yeah. And uh, the these are the actions that would follow this action of creating the inventory uh, would be to do an assessment and investigation. See now the points there are five to thirty points. That's a lot. That's a big, big heavyweight thing. And then reuse planning. We could decide what we want to do it. If we want to work on those sites, that gives you another five to fifteen points. And then marketing to developers is another market. You'd have to come up with a marketing plan. But that's important, I think. But I see, this could be grant it. funded. You could get a grant to do all these yeah. other things. Yeah. So I, I wondered. You know, that's all I have here. All right, that screen sharing has stopped. Okay, all right. So that's my brownfield spiel. Um, so we'll set it up for March 28th. Um, I might want to do it in a different location um, because I can't deal with this. If somebody's coming all the way from yes, the uh, viewing from the university, I, I'm not going to like put them through this. And so it's either. We could do a meeting in another location with, uh, and we could. I, I have a friend who could uh, film it, or we could just do a Zoom meeting and leave her in her office. Oh, that would be yes. And because if it's just us, a small group, it's yeah, not, I hate to bring I, somebody. I agree. I agree. Travel in two two hours, and they'll say, "Well, what are these people? Nobody cares." So they right, won't care. right. But this way, if it's Zoom, they won't know how many people are in tune, and we've got to talk it up, talk it up, advertise it, advertise it. Put it on the so website. I'll work on that over the next week. Um, it this has to be done before the end of March uh, because I'm going to have surgery March 30th, and I'm going to be off my feet for at least six weeks. For what? I have to have my that foot taken care of. Is the former sewage plant one of your brownfield sites? Where where is that at? Uh, behind. It's known as Sewer City. Yeah. The, the one yes. where the little boy fell in the pit and yes. died? Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's one. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's in there. All right, so that's the brown fields. In fact, if you want to see what I have so far, I don't think I printed it out. No, I didn't print it out. I had my son work on it. So is this a list of the brown fields? Yeah, that's, that's oh, good. The list. Very good. Uh, down Egg Harbor City here, we have um, Philadelphia Avenue, Boardman's Pike, Philadelphia Avenue, Cincinnati. They're all on the pike in the Philadelphia Avenue. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, good. They're all in high visibility areas, good, 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 you know, good. all in commercial areas where, you know, you want to, you want to have commercial development. Mostly old gas stops, um, but I don't think it includes the Vel, what was called Velcro or something like site, the place where they made shellac. Um, and it is on Atlantic Avenue. Oh, in the back there. Lloyd yes. Winberg owned that building. That's right. Yes. Yes. That was been an issue for always. Yes. So I don't know that that's there. Atlantic Avenue. 
Atlantic Avenue. No, it's not. Yeah, there it is. A Penbow Clothing is not the site. You should definitely add that site. What is it? Um, you go down like from McDonald's and make a left on um, Atlantic oh. Avenue. There's a two oh yeah, I know that building. Place, it's, it's used it's to oh, Wimberg um, Yeah, Stones. yeah, yeah. Stones. Stones. yeah. Stones. That yeah. was once a shellac factory. Yeah, that has always been an issue. <laughs> I'm not in sure fact, I, I wanted my husband to buy that building for his tools and stuff. Yeah. That's a nice little spot. I love yeah, that. It's away from everything back there. And I'm not sure I see the old sewage plant it's, on this list. It's, this ain't the whole thing. I just must not. This is 13. It's just this section. Hey, Carson. Yeah, that's the well, let's see, 128, 130 Philadelphia Avenue is like the even side of the street yeah, in the middle of the block. Gennaro's. Yeah, right around there, down near Gennaro's. It's a library. Um, what was in there, though? 327 Whitehorse Pike lot, 300, 327. That's this third terrace area. So that's not far from Acme, but not exactly Acme. It's where ideal furniture was. 557 Cincinnati. Yeah. I think that's Norfolk. the boat yard. Oh. Oh, yeah. I know. It's where Phoenix. Yes. Yes. I remember now. Sitco Service Station, 27 Whitehorse Pike. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's that's in front of the Acme. It was near the Acme site. It's in front of it. Here, yeah, Egg Harbor City Pump Station, that was right here. <clears throat> They used to say- Oh, it's 1010 Chicago, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I, okay. I, rest, 10, 10 I withdraw oh, yeah. my concern. 10, 10, yeah. All right, so that's been put into a spreadsheet. I pull it up and show it to you, but I don't want to lose them again. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> All right, uh, the other thing we need to do is reestablish our creative team. That, that's, you know, five easy points. <laughs> These are the people on it, is Erin Hoban. She's the our teacher at Cedar Creek. The art club at Cedar Creek. Hazel Mueller, jewelry maker. <laughs> <laughs> Me, journalist, uh, the garden club. Uh, Joe DiMatteo, he's a potter and here, lives here in town. Do you know him, Joe DiMatteo? No. He lives in your neighborhood. Really? Where? I, on, on that street. I'm on that street yeah, somewhere. Okay. Lafayette Quilters Guild and the NPP stakeholder team and the Egg Harbor City Economic Development Corporation, mainly because they do all the events and Well, stuff that's right like the now. new organization. Yeah. yeah, and they're younger people and I'm, hooray. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So I'll, I'll send this to city council and get this PS by resolution that's and we could get five points for that. Um, we discussed the tree grant. The other thing I wanted to discuss is I'm on the, I'm on two heavyweight committees, <laughs> finance and redevelopment and ordinance. And you know, all that. we need to protect our trees. So I was interested in suggesting that we have a tree protection ordinance. And that was another, what did I do? I had something else typed up. I didn't print it out, darn it. More than a thing, you have to be careful with tree protection ordinances. Every municipality has one in there. Every developer that wants to do work, you cut down a tree and you have to replace that tree in kind. Okay, and that, the reason you have to be careful of that, so that all the time with these communities, it becomes a money grab. So, oh, God, look, he's going to go in there and we're going to charge him. Well, if you're going to do that, reevaluate re your zoning first. Don't take a completely wooded site and make it commercial. Well, because, some of the ordinances and, 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 oh, that he'd have to be charged for every no. tree. Okay. Well, yes, because because your commercial sites allow you seventy to eighty percent impervious coverage. Well, why zone it if you're going to penalize a developer <laughs> by cutting a tree down? You, you can't do that. So you have to be careful what you put in your tree protection. Yeah, you're thinking just about like that's a what I wanted to talk to you about. We're having a meeting next week, and I want to suggest this, but I don't want it to be cumbersome. Thank you to be right for Egg Harbor City. Yeah, and we need to decide what, what do we want to protect? Yes. Uh, personally, I'm big on, we have to protect our street trees. Not necessarily that they can't come down, but I think 
they, they should, don't like them taken down like they were in the past. Yeah, you can't just take down a tree. tree because you don't want to wait. But the best way to do that is not an ordinance, but a re removal of an ordinance. The one that said that Echo City is no longer responsible for its street trees. Well, we we still want the residents to be responsible for the street trees. We don't want to take the take on that responsibility. That's but what every other community in New Jersey not, does, with one exception. Well, <laughs> we only do it if it's fallen in the street. Is the guys will come by and they'll remove the tree, but they're not going to go around, and they we just can't afford to do that. So, every other community in New Jersey does it. Well, every trees. other they're not yeah, the highest responsibility for the street trees, and, including trimming them. Well, they did them, did it here for many years. Yes. We want to do yeah. away with that. Yes. Right. Yeah, yes. I I find it unconscionable sometimes is what people have to pay. It's not on their <laughs> property. <laughs> Those street trees are half on the property and half the city. They're not. They're in within the right away. But but it's it's a it's a and it and you don't own it's an the right easement. Way. Not an ownership. No, it, what it is, is if it's in the right of way, it's city property because it's not an easement. It's a right of way. I thought it was an easement. Mm -hmm. No, nope. your sidewalk and your curb and your street and that grass strip is within the right of way. That's a right of way. That's not an easement. I would an ask easement, the lawyer. An easement would be your property. If, if you have your property and you have a 50 foot roadway easement and you have a 10 foot easement on your property, right. it's called a landscape easement to where the trees would be. That's an easement, okay? That belongs to you, but it also allows the city to come That's onto your property to maintain. Yes. But our city trees are not in an easement. They're within a right of way. Big difference. Right of way is ownership. Ownership is city. City owns those trees. City owns those sidewalks. Yet you're asking a private citizen always to maintain sidewalks and trees. Silly rule when you think about it. Doesn't belong to you. Never did, never will. Well, most if you deeds, go back into the history of most the situation. Old, old deeds go to center lines of the streets. Okay. That's a lot of times that's what that is. But if your property goes to the center line of the street and there's a street in there, that street has a right, right of way, whether it's 50 feet, 60 feet, or 70 feet, that's ownership. Including the side the, the yeah. merge. Sure. Yeah. And the sidewalks. And the sidewalks. But we the city doesn't take care of sidewalks. No, I know. I suspect the city illegal. doesn't take care of trees either. I, I know. In the in the nineties, they abolished the shade tree commission, and they put the onus on the homeowner to yeah, take right. care of the trees, right. which is why we're losing them. The trees are coming to the end of their lifespan. Mm -hmm. They need to come down. Some of them, yeah. a lot of them, need to and come down. And if they fall across the street, the city does remove. And, and if, if they yes. fall in the street, the city will take it away. And that's why people don't maintain it because it costs thousands of dollars to maintain those big trees. Right. The, the, you're not going to get a homeowner to do that. No, well, right. I had two removed. Cost me two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. One was dead, and one was ready yeah. to die. And and it's not even your tree. Well, I got I just plant I got thirty thousand dollar grant and planted trees all over town. Yeah. <laughs> well, any in any case, uh, we need to decide how we're going to protect our trees. What do we want in this ordinance? I have ideas. I it's on here, but I can't get it because I can't. The Have you seen the work doesn't work. A recommended tree ordinance. Yes, I have several here. And uh, so far, the one for Northfield is, is the most comprehensive one. Of course, it lists all the definitions. Um, it requires, uh, it says no person can uh, remove a tree with a diameter of eight inches or greater without. Um, getting a permit mm -hmm. so we could we could establish a permit program like nominal fee like 25 bucks and just have some i want to take my tree down you have to apply for a permit we would have to inspect Check the it. tree yeah. to make sure the city have no right whatsoever to remove it, a tree it, well it boggles the mind because first of all the city doesn't want to be responsible for the trees in their right of way 
However, they want to control what you do on your property. No. To cut a tree down. That's what a tree I, we're proposing that we yes, the city adopt it. There is no ordinance. Yeah, I know. The ordinance for, for so, trees right now reads something like. I, no, what I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> what I, I'll say from the very beginning, you have to be very careful what you put in that ordinance. I know. That's why we're having okay. this discussion because so we could decide what to put in the ordinance. A lot of municipalities <laughs> will go back and turn around and say, in their tree protection ordinance, on your property, if you want to cut a tree down, you have to come to the municipality. Why? Well, because this is like 2023. No, and no, because it's a, no, because the municipality wants the twenty-five dollar fee. No, that's not where we're doing this. We're doing this for the environment. I, I understand. Yeah. Yes. I'm I'm tell I'm telling you, you have to be careful what you put in that ordinance. So, what do you and think should you go would, in the ordinance? I, that's not for me. That's that's a committee discussion All right. on how you want to word it. And where you want to enforce it, but we can recommend. Yeah. Well, yes, you can. Uh, all I'm saying so is that from the very beginning, if you adopt this, be very careful what you put in. So let's hear it. <laughs> what do you want to put in it? I, 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 I'm, I'm doing a project right now in Canyon County. Okay, over 800 trees are coming down. Eight, 800. How Including many do they have to replace? 800. Who's taking them down? The developer. All right, so you see now this or this oh, ordinance okay. has a, a schedule and, here. Uh, and do you know what their, their schedule is? $300 a tree. No, this says That's that if you good. take down Nine, less than eight trees, you don't have yep. to replace any. If you take down eight to 12, but, but you have to replace 3, two. If you take down 18 to 24, you have to replace tree six. Right. And yep. those are two and a half inch caliper, nice yep. trees. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That, that's what this ordinance yes. says. So it has, and several I'm, of them have I'm the dealing, same thing. I'm dealing with an ordinance where the developer has to come up with 800 trees at $300 a pop. And where's he going to put Well, them? that's the uh, that's that's the other option. That we have a million dollars. Forget your job. Come on. That's, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Well, we want to be reasonable. We don't want, we don't right. want, but we don't want anybody going in and clear cutting of course not. A, a whole lot. And then putting a little postage there, right, and then putting a couple of trees around. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some money attached to it. So if you're going to clear cut a lot, count how many trees you're taking down, and you either abide by this schedule or a schedule, not this particular one, and replant the trees, or we establish a, a tree fund where you could give us the money and we'll plant trees somewhere. Oh, it doesn't have to be on your site, but we're going to replace the trees. The trees have to be replaced. Like another, it's not a no net loss because there would be a net loss in this instance. Mm -hmm. But the state has, for instance, has a no net loss ordinance. And when they widened the parkway, all the municipalities along the parkway got thousands and thousands really? of dollars to plant trees in their communities yeah. because they removed the trees on the side of the road. Galloway had so much money they didn't know they didn't have anywhere to spend it because they're already wooded, you know. So and that's part of the problem. Yeah. They get the money and they know they're not going to put it toward landscaping or anything like that. And it goes into the coffers. It becomes a money grab. Well, but we don't want that. We just want to be, uh, you know, responsible. We want believe the trees me, I've replaced. Lived, I've lived this nightmare for over 10 years. I believe you. Tree protection ordinances. Well, maybe you should look at these and pick out the best part of it. I, I had a whole list. It's, it's, I have a file on that computer. I could bring it up if I well, can pull up. Try. I'm going to try. Oh, yeah. Gary there's, can pull up ordinances. There's, there's tons, of, tons of ordinances. Well, I just went there. through all the ordinances and you pulled know. out the things that I liked, but I don't know. It's not just me. Uh, how do we do this again? Share my screen. And where do you go from here? what I want files it's not in. let me find the file first <coughs> to me I, it was always that a tree protection ordinance should be clear and simple no indiscriminate tree clearing well, that's very vague <laughs> can't that include we're repaving streets can't can't wipe out a lot 
okay, by a homeowner. Okay, you can wipe out a lot if you're putting a development or repaving a street or repaving a street. Yeah. Oh damn! Hold yeah, but you should have to replace them though. But, oh, why, if you owe the land, if you own the land, right? Why should you replace it if you want if you want your tree down? Why? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I thought you meant somebody else was uh, was taking the no. tree down. Uh, what I'm saying is. These developers, a I lot of developers are being handicapped today because right. they're going in and they're developing their property per ordinance. And that ordinance permits them in a, in a commercial zone, let's say that they're allowed to clear 80% because right. most of it is store and parking and sidewalks, okay? So you clear 80% of the lot, okay? What you're allowed to do by ordinance and then the town comes back and bangs you and says, okay, for the trees that you cut down, this is how much we're going to charge you for no, that, every that's tree that's really over, say, five inches in diameter. Why? If, if, if you're going to do that, don't take a wooded site and zone it commercial. I can't find it. And, you know, people want to know why housing developments are so expensive, why paving and sidewalk is so expensive, I why houses are so expensive. That's why every little, every little ordinance that's tacked onto it, these developers have to pay. Where the hell's the and guess, guys go? And they don't pay it, they pass <laughs> it along to people who buy or rent. So you, you end up paying for it anyway. As my oh, friend Eric Husta says, who's the head of the oh, county park too. system, for them to put up a park, a, a soccer field, mm -hmm. costs right. three so, times what it would cost if they weren't a public agency. Yeah. All right. So let me let me see if I can remember some of the things I had in here. I mean, I have all these. I have forms from the state. I have existing laws right. about yeah. trees from the state. Um, you must have gone to the uh, Shade Tree Commission meeting. Uh, yeah, That's I think I got this. I got this there. That's yeah. right. Um, so it, it it talks a little bit about clear cutting and that schedule of if you're going to do a development, commercial development, you know, on private property. I'm more concerned about the street trees. I would like to see that whenever the city does a road project that. They remove the bad trees, see if they could save the good trees, and then right and, away replant. And plant. Yes. And, and That's replant. Just well, shit. right, right now they don't do that yeah. because it's yeah. expensive. And but I'm I like, know also from knocking on doors that more than half of the residents prefer not to have trees. Well, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. And you know, the when never they give up my trees. When they go door to door to say we're paving your street, you're gonna be inconvenienced. Do you want a tree? If they say no, then you don't get a tree. Yeah. But if they want a tree, then get them a tree. You know, we need, mm -hmm. we're going to go bald. We can't let this happen to our town. Mm -hmm. Our town is known for its trees. Yes, absolutely. And it's That's the only argument. really positive thing we have yes. going for oh, yeah. us. Yes, yes. No, you're doing that. right. Don't, That's don't it. it. I love trees. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, Hazel and I look at our yard. I mean, it's all trees. We don't get rid of them unless they're. You know, but most of the shape. London Plains are 50 to 100 years old. Sure. Yes, it's yeah. often a delicate question as sure. to whether they should come down and be replaced or yeah. not. Yes. Well, I think you know, I the more I look at them and the more I see how they've been neglected and and like branches break off instead of them being clear, you know, cut so that the tree blooms at the top. That you know, we can't afford to do that so. Maybe they should come down. Let's start with a little small new tree. They are messy trees too. So unless something is yeah. yeah. messy. And th that's the other thing is there's in one of these documents a really good list of trees. They're not even available. on that new list. And it's a real short list. Yeah. So you're saying the city does that not does not have a tree protection ordinance at all? No. And the only the only reference to trees in is in the developmental ordinance requiring two and a half inch caliber trees, so many. A new, a new development, a new development, large development. Yes. But you know, if like I said, if somebody goes in there and cuts down a thousand trees, and they're required to put in ten, uh, 
What happened when they did Egg Harbor City North? I mean, there's not really too many trees there. Did they, did they have to, did they ever have to replant anything there? Who's that? In Egg Harbor City North? Listen, my husband, well, now, when Brad Hager was here, my husband did a lot of that layout. He made sure that the trees stayed there. I personally regret it. You see where the first houses were built out there when Brad was here. Gary. I personally regret it, phase one, just so that they wouldn't clear it. But the other, the places I was out there yesterday, uh, today, riding through there, and there's no trees on the in, newer houses. You know, in section two, they just wiped them out. Now, that is inconceivable to me that somebody could just go there because you can grade a site to save trees. Mm -hmm. You don't have to clear it up. The properties in the Acre well, North easier. area it's were easier. required to have a tree at, in the front yard because their uh, verge is only two feet. So, because we went through there to see if, you know, we could plant trees there when we got our last tree board, uh, grant. And the engineer said, you're not going to be able to plant trees on the curb there because no. there's a really oh. tiny verge. Yeah. And I drove through the neighborhood and every single front yard no. has Yep. in the yard though mm -hmm. on their property well what they well do, it might still be in the right of way but now what they do today is you put your 50 foot right away in for the road and then on the other side of that right of way on the person's property you put a 10 foot uh landscaping easement in that's what it that's or what a 10 foot uh, uh utility easement for gas electric and telephone so that it's not all in the street right so things are changing yeah, but things are also changing today in that they're not requiring these huge uh, cartways anymore. You don't need 30 foot wide streets. You can do everything today with 28 foot wide streets, have 11 foot left over, put the sidewalk one foot from the property line, four, and you got six foot left over for a grass strip where you can plant the tree. So there, there are things that are changing today in the engineering world. Oh, yeah, well, um, we're talking about egg harbor city as it yeah, exists no, now. Two foot doesn't work. No, it doesn't yeah. work. No, and you that's that's the only neighborhood like that. Yeah, Everywhere you, else, there's you can't the streets who are already <coughs> cut out. Yeah. Are there you sidewalks know. on all of Brad Hager's <coughs> properties? Yes. Well, what, I, so I don't have the, my this list is the, here. And Brad <laughs> actually did everything the right way. He took his time. Uh, and, and what's he, the width of the grass part? I, I don't know. Okay. I, I would have to double check that. After a while, all of a sudden, the difference would be here. Yeah, but I will guess today again. I never realized every house in the new part is gray. Yeah. It's just you, you can tell the difference between phase okay. one and phase two. Oh, God, of course. It's a shame. Phase two is just a. Do you all have uh, front porches? No, nothing. <coughs> they don't even have a lot of windows. There's hardly any windows in those houses. Brad took his time and he had different, he he had different mo models. Yeah, it's such a shame. Oh my God. All right. Well, I, I can't go through the list. I'll email the list yeah, good. to everybody and just let me know what you think is important because, I, like I said, I have a meeting next week. I want to propose this, but I don't want it to be too onerous on anybody. I just want to. Um, Man, I, again, I say this a thousand times. I thank you for your energy. Well, I, you know, it might you not do. go anywhere because. But look what you're doing. All the, the way research you've are. already done every day. I, it's awesome. Awesome. All right. So other couple things, yeah. uh, just to make an announcement on, you're going to be here for this, right? Because I'm going to be. For what? Uh, April 15, 10 a.m. to noon, prescription drug take back Why day. do we have to be there? You said you would you would be there. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What day of the week is it? Oh, it's, it's a Saturday, Saturday, ten to noon. Okay. All at right. the Acorn City Police Department. All right. It's just for two hours, and we're partnering with Port Republic because they don't have a drop box. Okay. They so don't have a police the drop department. Box going to be? It's in it's in the vestibule. It's always been there. Yeah. Yeah. We just okay. We're, so we're like doing this to like welcome people like oh yeah right, here you go this okay and I, give I out information no and. No Okay. But we're doing it because Port, like I said, they don't have a police department. No problem. So they can't have okay. a drop box and they want to be able to use our drop box. Right. So we said, okay, well, and they will send the state, state trooper because they're patrolled by the state police. Okay. And um, Marcella, our chief, has uh, arranged to have a state awesome. trooper here okay. instead of our department. Okay. So, um, so it's going to be me and the state police. 
<laughs> and, and the girls in Port Republic. And yeah. I, you know, if I could hobble over by then, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll be can, there. Don't worry about it. It's, you know I can do that. I love to be yeah, out where people that. are. Okay, good. And then there's um, March 9th, if anybody's interested, at the Warney Nature Center, Fox Nature Center. It, where is that? It's Still it's Manor Park. Still Manor County oh. Park. Okay. No. They're having a spotter and lantern fly demonstration and walk. Uh, what do they, what is that encounter? Um, it says meet at the Warren E. Fox Nature Center and a demonstration and guided walk by USDA about the spotted lantern flight. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just to, I guess at this time at March 9th, which is when it's a Thursday, they're going to show them the, how, to scrape the, them. how to scrape them. Yeah. And this is the time to do that because mm -hmm. once the trees start, button that's, you know, that's when they pop that it, that's an interesting thing with that spotter land uh, fly. do you know they only go after one 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 tree and it's a junk tree yeah well okay. it's an ilanthus yeah and do you know they and and they're 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 pretty sly about that the spotted lantern fly okay they realized okay that when they go after that tree and ingest the sap okay that is one smelly tree, and so is the sap. So guess what? The lanternfly ingests that. Okay, so the first bird that comes along and wants to ingest the lanternfly, he spits it out. He <laughs> said, that tastes like good for him. Tastes like shit. Okay? <laughs> and it is because it's a garbage tree. And what they're hoping is that it that and don't get a gas here. But they say if they go after a maple or an oak, that would be a very good thing, okay? Because what the lanternfly then ingests, the bird will eat. Oh, and eat the and lanternfly. But they do go after all the other trees when there's no lanternfly. But then around. the birds will yeah. eat the fly, the and butterfly. The, yes. The thing. yes. So the thing is to get rid of that one invasive tree. Right. I've got one in my backyard, yep. and I should get rid of it. Yep. You Except have to, it's not exactly in my backyard. Yeah, you have right to, on the border. You have to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, if you try to get rid of it, you need to get it all. Because if you just cut it down, it'll sprout right. over and over and over. If you get rid of that tree, which is invasive, you will get rid of the land of the fly. Yeah. There are quite it's a few Atlantises in Egg Harbor City, I'm sorry yes. to say. In the whole world, unfortunately. Well, <laughs> to be very specific right here. Yeah. yeah. And there are grant funds around from the state to uh, yeah. remove uh, Tree of Heaven. Really? Uh, yeah. Check the the my tree from them? Maybe, yeah. Check the EP <laughs> website. I, I think it's more like the city would have to apply for a grant to get it to oh. take them down, but <laughs> that might not happen. I hate the tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they stink, like he said. Yes. It's smelly. Yeah, I've never noticed that. Yeah, it's just... yeah. You've never sucked the sap. You got to go out and suck the sap. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, anybody's interested, March 1st. Which, when's March 1st? Oh, That's you like... didn't write that. I was going to ask you, March what is the date? March 1st is uh, Wednesday. This March week. 1st, 7 to 9 p.m. That's tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Wednesday. At the Hamilton. Greater Hamilton. Um, oh, the Canoe Club oh. in Hamilton. It is so beautiful. That's I'm... where we went when we got the uh, grant. The canoe club. I, I never knew that place existed until about five years ago, and I can't believe how beautiful it is. Back it's a sweet it's home. Home. It's nice. Yeah, gorgeous. Beautiful. So it's a seed swap. I don't know if anybody so saw you this. Have? You just take your seeds. Oh, you take and your seeds. And you switch with somebody else. So I thought that was kind of cute. Thank you. It is a kind of, I like that idea. And just so you know, the Hamilton Green Committee um, has established a nursery in their public works yard where they they got tree seedlings they get them the cheapy ones and they put them in pots oh, nice. and they're growing in whenever somebody wants a tree i like that. they have the trees right in the you city. know you gave me a maple tree some years ago it was like only this big i was supposed to give it to my granddaughter and then she, she didn't take it that sucker's huge yeah, now. They're fast back our yard. It's beautiful right. who else is here um, steve and mike <coughs> all right i would love to share that uh ordinance thing with you but i don't know i can't get into the computer it's this thing died uh, so anybody have anything else to discuss no, for you, yeah. okay um, i tried to slip into my list of possible places for new trees the strip of 
Buffalo Avenue that includes the Buffalo Avenue School, which is a very nice, beautiful, wide strip. And I know there's none were planted there. Uh, they which, which, which street? Buffalo yeah. or In Cincinnati? front of the Buffalo Avenue School, mm -hmm. the entire block. Well, we did ask them when we did the first tree planting, and that's what you see there we planted. But that's way on in, in, in the interior of the property. Nothing is in the verge next to the street. There used no. to be trees there. And yes, they were. Them all down. Sure. I remember yeah. that. Well, and, when and, we and asked, that's what they asked for, and we gave I, them what I, they I, asked I, for. I just wondered if you, you, if it went through that they asked for it. I, I just sent, sent these invitations for you to put it in. The other place I asked for was on the Cincinnati Avenue side of the public parking lot that is behind the library, the, the, um, across the terrace from the library building. Oh, that which, might be a good spot. It's right next to business cards tomorrow. Right, right, right. And that's another beautiful place to I put know, some Don't trees. you think there should be a curb cut on that street, though, for the, that parking there lot? There is a per curb cut. Not on, the, on, not on Cincinnati. It's yes, there on is. On the terrace. Yes, there is. No. You cannot get into that parking lot. Oh, you can't sure. drive it, but there is a curb cut. It's for walking, but there is a curb cut. Uh -huh. Well, oh, you mean to get in the parking lot? The library parking lot. <laughs> you only can, you can only get to it from, from the from, no oh, from the, the terrace. Oh. Yeah. there is no curb cut on to get in to drive into that parking lot oh. in Cincinnati. Okay. But you know that that's a spot. That's a, that's a public spot. You're saying that's yes, public. Yeah. Public. Property. All right. Well, that's a good one for next time. Next round. Okay. In well, three years. So in three years, we'll have awesome. another. All right. I'll, a lot uh, of stuff on your plate, lady. I know. And to, all right, I'm going to turn this off. I oh. hope your operation is successful. Yeah. When are you getting yeah. your surgery? When the you 30th. Oh, I just oh, okay. said. All right, you guys. I'm going to sign off. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good one. You too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing that's that's a shame with uh, uh, and I and, and I know when I sat on the planning board. Do you remember? When